Hi everyone! Again, this is your calibration mentor. And this time, I'm going to teach you on how to calibrate a digital stopwatch using the direct comparison method. And now, before we start, if you are not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, just click subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be updated to our latest calibration videos. Now, before we start, let's discuss the objectives. At the end of this video, the calibration personnel is expected to know the basics and types of the stopwatch to understand the calibration and method called direct comparison. Perform calibration of stopwatch using direct comparison. Interpret results and report the calibration results. Let's start. Introduction to stopwatch. What is stopwatch? Stopwatch is an instrument used to measure time interval, which is defined as the elapsed time between two events. One common example of time interval is a person's age, which is simply the elapsed time since the person's birth. The standard unit of time interval is the second. The second is one of the seven base units in the international system of units. Every stopwatch is composed of four elements, a power source, a time base, a counter, and an indicator or display. Types of stopwatches Stopwatches are classified into two categories, type 1 and type 2. For type 1, these stopwatches utilize digital design employing quartz oscillator and electronic circuitry to measure time interval. For type 2, these stopwatches utilize mechanical mechanism to measure time interval. These types of stopwatches are usually calibrated in the laboratory and are often used as working standards to perform field calibration. Type 1 stopwatch as a quartz crystal oscillator that serve as a time base that usually has a nominal frequency of 32,768 Hz. Time base oscillator or sometimes called a clock or reference oscillator serve as the reference for all the time and frequency functions performed by the device. The 32,768 Hz frequency of the time base means the clock ticks 32,768 times per second. For type 2 stopwatch, the power source is a helical coil spring, which stores energy from winding of the spring. Time base is usually a balance wheel that functions as a torsion pendulum. In most mechanical stopwatch, the balance wheel is designed to oscillate at 2.5 periods per second, which produces 5 ticks or bit per second. A brief overview of calibration. The calibration described in this video focuses on the laboratory calibration and not field calibration. To better understand the difference between laboratory calibration and field calibration, here is an example. Consider a stopwatch is calibrated in the laboratory against the standard laboratory calibration and a calibration certificate and or, or sticker are issued to the customer. Generally, it takes longer and is made much more carefully because the required uncertainty is smaller. Then, that same stopwatch is can be used as a working standard to do field calibration or bringing calibrated stopwatch to the field to calibrate another timing devices such as taximeters. Another example is the device that are field calibrated are generally not used as measurement reference for performing another calibration. Instead, they are working instrument used for scientific businesses or legal purposes. Therefore, their calibration can be taught as a period test or inspection that ensures 
that these devices are working properly meeting their specifications. In other words, field calibration is generally pass or fail calibration. This means that the device is tested to see whether it meets its intended or legal metrology requirements and either pass or fails. If it fails, it is removed from service unit, it can be adjusted, repaired, or replaced. Introduction to Calibration Methods We use NIST Recommended Practical Guide, Special Publication 960-12. There are three generally accepted methods for calibrating a stopwatch or timer. One, Direct Comparison Method which compares the unit under test display to a traceable time interval standard. Number two, totalized method, which requires a synthesized signal generator, a counter, and a traceable frequency standard. And number three, time-based method, which compares the frequency of the device under test time base to a traceable frequency standard. The direct comparison is the most common method used to calibrate stopwatches and timer. It compares the unit under test display to a traceable time interval standard, and it requires a minimal amount of equipment, but has a larger measurement uncertainty than the other method. Next, on this video, we are going to focus on the direct comparison method as it is the most common and simple way of performing calibration of stopwatch. For direct comparison, we have advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, this method is relatively easy to perform, and it does not require any special test equipment or standards. It can be used to calibrate all types of stopwatches and many types of timers, both electronic and mechanical. For disadvantages, the operator's start or stop reaction time is significant part of the total uncertainty, especially for short time intervals. Next method is totalized method. This method partially eliminates the measurement uncertainty from human reaction time, but it requires a calibrated signal generator and the universal counter, or totalized counter. This method is not covered in this video. If you like us to make video on how to calibrate digital stopwatch using totalized method, please leave your message in the comment section. Last is time-based method. It is the preferred measurement method for stopwatch and timer calibration. Since it introduces the least amount of measurement uncertainty, because the unit under test time base is measured directly, the calibration technician's response time is not a factor. This method is also not covered in this video. If you like us to make video on how to calibrate digital stopwatch using the time base method, please leave a message in the comment section. Next is preparation. For the standards to be used, we will be needing a digital stopwatch with 0.001 second resolution and a thermo hygrometer. Next is the pre-calibration checking. First, check the display of the DUT and make sure that it is readable. Second, press the start or stop button, make sure that it is working properly and capable of making trigger when pressed. Do the same to the reset button. Calibration of stopwatch in this video does not include opening of DUT and making measurements. Mostly rely on the working condition of the start or stop button of the DUT. That is why it is very important to make sure that the start stop and reset button of the DUT is working properly. And lastly, change battery if necessary. For the stabilization, 
allow the standard stopwatch in the DUT to stabilize in the laboratory environmental condition for temperature 23 degrees Celsius plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius for relative humidity 55% RH plus or minus 15% RH after doing the pre-calibration check now let's proceed to the calibration procedure using direct comparison method let's start human reaction time the first step in doing the calibration by the recomparison method is to determine the human reaction time of the calibration technician who will perform the calibration. There are two well-known methods in doing this. Method 1 is left-right hand start-stop and method 2 switch to switch start-stop. Take note that it depends on your procedure on which method to use. What is important here is that you have method on how to determine the amount of uncertainty caused by the reaction time of the calibration personnel who will perform the calibration. It is very important that you will conduct the test since the human reaction time is the most significant source of uncertainty for direct comparison. Now, let's proceed to the procedure. First, hold the standard on right hand and the device under test on left hand, then zero it by pressing the reset button. Second, assume a target interval of 5 seconds. Third, start the standard and the DUT by pressing the start or stop button simultaneously. Fourth, when target was reached, rapidly stop the stopwatches by pressing the start or stop button of the standard and the device under test simultaneously. Fifth, record the reading of the standard and the DUT to the datasheet. And lastly, repeat steps 1 to 5, 5 times for repeatability. As for this video, we will use method 1. We will start and stop the stopwatches using the left hand for the device under test and the right hand for standard. You can also perform both methods and see which of the two will produce lesser uncertainty. the human reaction time results trial 1 for trial 2 for trial 3 4 and trial 5 synchronization time bias result now compute for the human reaction time bias and for the human reaction time standard deviation for the human reaction time bias just get the maximum error. In this case, the maximum error is negative 0.039 second. For the human reaction time standard deviation, compute for the standard deviation of the computed errors. In this case, the standard deviation is 0 0.012 second. You can also use your Excel to compute for standard deviation. Next is the time interval test. Based on NIST practical guide, Type 1 stopwatches shall be accurate to the equivalent of plus or minus 9 seconds per 24 hours period. The time interval test is to be performed to determine the offset of the device under test with respect to the reference standard. Applying accuracy for type 1 stopwatches of plus or minus 9 seconds per 24 hours period. 
to compute for the tolerance for 600 seconds or 10 minutes nominal value. Tolerance is equal to 600 seconds multiplied to positive 9 seconds over 86,400 seconds. So, tolerance is equal to positive 0 0.06 seconds. Tolerance is equal to 600 seconds multiplied to negative 9 seconds over 86,400 seconds. So, tolerance is equal to negative 0 0.06 seconds. 86,400 seconds is equivalent to one day or 24 hours. For the calibration of digital stopwatch for a nominal value of 600 seconds, the allowable tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.06 seconds. In the next video, we will calibrate the stopwatch in a period of 600 seconds or 10 minutes in a nominal value. Now, let's do the calibration. First, set the standard in the DUT to 0 by pressing the reset button. Second, start the standard and the DUT at the same time by pressing the start or stop button. Third, when the standard reaches the test point, example 10 minutes, stop the standard and the DUT at the same time by pressing the start or stop button. It is very important to always ask the customer if they have specific test points. In this procedure, we use 10 minutes as a default. Fourth, record the reading of the standard in the DUT to the data sheet. Fifth, repeat the steps 1 to 4 five times for repeatability. If the customer have more than one test points, just repeat the steps 1 to 5. And last, compute for the computed standard reading.
Here are the time interval test results. For trial 1, trial 2, trial 3, 4, and trial 5. Here are the reading for the time interval test. To get the computed standard reading, 600 seconds multiply to standard average reading over device under test average reading. So the total computed standard reading is 599.988 seconds. Reporting the result. For measurement result of standard reading, is 599.988 seconds for device under test reading 10 minutes or 600 seconds and we have a result for uncertainty of 0 0.047 seconds the reference procedure used in this video is NIST recommended practice guide for stopwatch and timer calibrations 2009 edition special publication 960-12 That's it! Now you have your digital stopwatch calibrated. For any comments, messages, and suggestions, just email us at calibrationmentor at gmail.com Thanks for watching! Please subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for our upcoming videos. Thank <laughs> you.